Okay. Beautiful. So welcome to the Animals of a New Earth podcast. And I'm Carrie Lake, the creator of the podcast. Happy to be here and share with you a really dear friend of mine, Dr. Barry Sands. And Barry is uh, an emergency room veterinarian here in San Diego. She does really intense work and um, brings an, an amazing and beautiful heart and a beautiful awareness and consciousness to the work that she does. She and I have uh, played together on projects and we see the, the connection between human and animals in a really similar way as well as play at really similar levels of consciousness with respect to how, um, how humanity can evolve into a more harmonious species and, and maybe how the animals assist to that and are with us side by side in that. So, um, so I'm really excited for whatever our, wherever our conversation takes us, um, but, Barry, would you like to introduce yourself any further beyond that and just share a little bit more about where you play in the world and what you play with? Yeah, sure. Thanks, um, Carrie. It's wonderful to, to be here. Thank you for inviting me to, to have this chat with you. Um, I am an, a, a veterinarian. I've been a veterinarian for over 29 years, and I have a uh, holistic practice where I do acupuncture and functional medicine and all sorts of energetic modalities with animals. Uh, I also work on an emergency service in the critical care department, dealing with animals in the best possible way that you can in Western medicine, which is, you know, a wonderful opportunity to help them. Um, I'm also a, a certified trainer, coach, and mentor through the HeartMap Institute. And I utilize those techniques with um, clients and clients with animals and people without animals. And so it's just, a, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful um, addition to the healing that I can do. I love it. Thank you. The, the whole purpose, like the, the whole point behind sharing these conversations is to illuminate the the amazingly simple and profound conduit that the animal kingdom is to open the hearts of humans. And on some levels, it's really obvious, right? That our, our pets, we love our pets. We love the dolphins. We love the animals um, on the planet, wild animals. But in other ways, it's not so obvious um, that, that the connection with animals would open our hearts. And, I, one of the first things that's presenting that I would love for you to address is, um, for one thing, like, how do you do it? If you're an emergency vet, you get to see the animals in such profound distress and people in distress. But at the same time, you work with heart math, you, you have a holistic practice. For a lot of people, I think that just even thinking about animals in an emergency is so overwhelming there they would just shatter like they would just check out because it's just too much so can you talk about what that's like for you and how you bring heart to it how how your heart stays open when you're doing these things yeah well you know uh aside from the tools and techniques that i have learned to use through my training in heart math um it is absolutely essential to be able to always come from a place of heart feelings and be open to your intuitive guidance at all at all times and it allows me to be calm in the in the midst of all the chaos and the crazy that happens um, because it happens on so many levels it happens with the the clients that come in they're in great distress for a variety of different reasons right they have fears around the loss of their pet um, they have fears around the money that they may need to spend, the possibilities of losing their animals, um, the trauma alone being so acute. I mean, that's the nature of emergency that it just happens. Right. right? So not, it's not expected. <laughs> so that's all like a blindsidedness to that. And um, and people come in, they express their emotions in all these different ways when in the face of that adversity. And 
And a lot of people will go towards anger and frustration, irritability, fear, anxiety, and it gets um, trans transmitted onto the veterinarians that are there and the staff that is there. So what I do is presented with the situation, at least with clients, I will always um, go to a place of calm. I go within and I um, connect with my heart space. And then I go in when I'm ready to greet them. And they feel that. As soon as I walk in, they can feel the energy that I'm putting out is a calming energy. And so whatever frazzled situation they may be in, there's an immediate shift. And it may be a little one, but it's enough, you know, to get some kind of conversation started. Um, you know, as with the animals, I'm of service. I, I'm there to help them, you know, and, and with my uh, education and training uh, extensively in the emergency room, it's um, not much surprises me that comes in anymore. And, mm. and I have a, also a very good uh, sense of where this animal wants to be. Is it ready to transition? Is it, it does it want to be helped? You know, is it going to live? Is it going to die? And that really helps me um, navigate through the uncertainties in what I need to implement as a therapy and also what I, what I tell the client. Hmm. It's remarkable. You know, I think it's just a profound skill level that you have to, um, I, and I think a lot from experience, right, that you can be there with so much going on and yet have the priority of knowing why you're there in the first place, right? And, and still have the presence that what actually helps the whole picture is you staying right with your heart. Yeah. Was yeah. it, was, go ahead. No, please. Um, do you, are you aware of a time when it was, a, when you shifted from, just overwhelm adrenaline, you know, like survival mode, react to the, react to the emergency. Is it, do you remember like evolving from that approach into being able to stay within your heart? Um, uh, you know, I don't remember a specific point in time where that might've happened. Uh, I feel like I have always been naturally connected to my heart and yeah. it, that part was set, it seemed pretty strong with me. And then when my skill level and my experience sort of caught up with that together, you know, that, that, um, that implicit knowledge that you have knowing what you know, yeah. and then that connection to like, uh, the, the unknown in a sense through your intuition, those two things together really became nice, um, a pairing, a really helpful pairing. Um, however, there are times in the ER when it is absolutely overwhelming and I'm, I find myself, you know, not in my heart space mm. and I'm going through these mental and emotional roller coaster moments. And when I'm aware of those situations, is when I will choose to do some sort of technique on the fly so that I can get into coherence and go into my heart and, and recalibrate myself. Mm. Um, for instance, there was a time I walk in at six o'clock in the morning. My shift starts at six. I have um, a, probably about 15, 17 critical inpatients that I'm dealing with. And clients are calling on the phone for updates and they want to know how their animal's done. They want to talk to me. My computer system is completely down and I'm not an IT person. So <laughs> I just added to the stress of my day. So I'm on the phone with the IT person and they're it's speaking in a language that I don't understand. And he's telling me, well, this is what you need to do. And I'm like, I'm not the person you should be talking to. You just need to fix it. And then, so then I can go about my day um, because I, I can't do that. I don't know what you're saying. So he, uh, he did end up, you know, fixing it. And uh, one of my nurses came over and asked me a question about a treatment plan. And I just snapped at her. Mm. And she, she was, I've been, we've been working together for a while and, you know, we, 
we have a, a close relationship. And she turns around, and she says, what's the matter with you? Why did you say that to me? So then I said, oh, I'm sorry, give, I need a minute. Just give me a minute. So then I just sat there in the world of this chaos. And I just closed my eyes, went inside, did a, um, an inner, inner calm technique. And within a minute, I was fine and everything was okay. And I, I completely noticed the shift in the whole room as soon as I did that. The nurses were calmer, the, the staff was calmer, the receptionists were calmer. It just, it had a um, sort of a snowball effect. Yeah, yeah. What I love about that is when we come to our hearts as people, we put ourselves in that same um, unconditional, giving, loving place that animals generally are for us. You know, it's, it is the, uh, the, the neutral emanation of the heart. The heart doesn't have a judgment that this is a good thing and that is a bad thing. The heart simply says, here I am, here's mm -hmm. some nourishing energy, here's some nourishing consciousness, and so that everything can unfold in the best possible way, you know? And that's, that is one of the ways that I recognize what animals offer people all the time, why animals feel therapeutic per se. And this is, this is what I love, like the demonstration of a human being that space in the middle of, you know, super intense freak out land <laughs> which, yeah. you know, for most people, is like I said, it's just not even an option to step in that building, you know? Yeah. Um, it's, it's pretty remarkable. And I love, I love that there are the tools now. There are more tools, whether it's heart math or other techniques, you know, it, different people teach different techniques. And ultimately what it's about is how it feels, right? Right. Right. When you, right. when you and feel it, that shift. Mm -hmm. and, and not only that, but the beauty of doing these techniques will, the more you go into your heart and you connect with your um, intuitive intelligence yeah. and synchronize your heart and your brain and your, and your nervous system, it creates a biological change, like a, like a permanent upgrade. Totally. Where you can exist in that state. And so you go from a place of, of thinking to doing to being and then you just become that way most of the time i mean we're human so there's no one's that you know you may kind of like oh but where'd i go <laughs> exactly but see this is what i love because the the more often you have that experience it's it takes you back to innate it takes you back to your natural state of being which is that coherence it's how we're designed to live and the more often you have that experience, even the mind starts looking for it, right? Mm -hmm. The mind gets less interested in twanging off to the side. And even in, especially in times of stress, the mind starts looking, all right, where is that feeling in the body that is the change in chemistry? It is the change in physiology. And yeah. The mind starts to realize that the body is actually like the safest place to be, because that from there is where you can um, you can sense what's actually going on around you and respond with your intuitive skills or and or with your intellectual skills. Like you have the marriage of both of them from that place. Yeah, yeah, and you know that's a that's an excellent point and, and a beautiful way to put it because the people react more to what they feel um, at, at first. And a lot of times the first thing people feel is nervousness or fear or anxiety. And then they start, you know, going through this loop of feeling and thinking and thinking and feeling. And then before you know it, you're a complete mess. And, <laughs> right? Yeah. And you get things out of control. <laughs> and yeah. so to, to have the body feel calm, and to connect with that, it, that's not, even though that is innate in us, it's not an easy place to be or to become for a lot of people, in, especially in this time, you know, when we're, you know, with COVID-19 and people having social distancing and 
and being afraid of so many things, um, they there's a lot of emotions that are flying around, you know, and yes. and not everybody is handling it well and some are handling it better than others and there's a whole spectrum of, of the way things are and i notice that in the you know the animals the animals are home with us and they're they're forced to be around us yes, <laughs> yes. in in all of that vibration of whatever anxiety or stress or interpretation right because that's that's what humans do they have i love that you brought that up humans we have this experience in our body whether it's nervousness or anxiety or even just excitement but then it gets interpreted and often misinterpreted to mean i'm about to die you know yeah. and a, a, a change in our state of being without tools and skills and a little bit of education the mind can just sort of panic and either shut everything down that might mm -hmm. be familiar or run away, that might be familiar, right? Or some other way try to control the experience. But all of that's from the, the human mental interpretation of whatever this feeling is. Right. And so, right. so I talk about this all the time, but I wanna hear what you have to say. What's the difference then between humans and animals with respect to that, that you know, feeling something in your body and then what you do about it? Well, I mean, animals are so heart-based, naturally. They, they, they exist from a place of love. Um, and well, you know, not, it depends on the species, I think. You know, if you're comparing dogs and cats, um, domestic animals as such, you know, cat, dogs are very much of service. They, they want to be a part of us. They want to do what we, they want to make us happy. And they want to be a service. And um, they absorb a lot of our energies. Uh, cats, on the other hand, you know, not so much. You know, they, they have their own agenda. They still, they love us. They have open hearts. They're from, they're a little bit different. You know, sometimes I feel like they're here to, to teach us things. Mm -hmm. And they're not as much as, as service. You know, if, if they're not, if they don't like what, what they're feeling, they're going to tell you, you know, yeah. they're, they're going to either, you know, pee on your laundry basket or, <laughs> you, know, you know, poop in the bathtub or just vomit on something that you love. Yeah. You know, they, they have a specific place where they know they would do that. That would get, a, that would get some reaction in you. Yes. Um, but, you know, the, our animals are, they, they, at least they are reflections of us on some level. Um, and, you know, I don't, I don't know. Is that, was that a good question yeah. or? It's, it's all good. I love what you said, but I have to say, de depends on what you call service, right? If we say that somebody's of service because they help us feel better, and that better is the definition of service, then I, I could go with what you're saying. But like, to me, I see cats, they're just very different. Like cats are of service to help, help remind us what um, sovereignty can be, you know, to what freedom can be and what honoring yourself can feel like and what it can be like, like you said, if, um, if I'm not feeling honored and I'm not feeling heard and, and I've tried to communicate it, but I'm still not being heard, I need to kick it up a notch and be a little louder. So I'm going to poop here, you know, that, and that, that can happen. Um, it's just, a, again, goes back to how humans interpret the experience, you know, and if often, if it's a, an unpleasant experience, humans tend to, go into problem solving mode before they start listening yes. like in you know how do we fix this bad cat bad 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 instead of going that's fascinating so i wonder what's really going on and when humans can shift into that place of asking that question i wonder what's really going on here 
Yeah, well, I, I, I'm hoping that most people who, who live with these animals, live with their dog, live with their cat, you know, if their behavior is completely off and say the cat never does that, and then all of a sudden, you know, it, 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 you know, the cat pees in the sink or pees on some laundry, a lot of times they want to, they're smart enough to say, look, I have a problem mm -hmm. and, and you need to pay attention. And so usually a, a lot of cats will do that when they have urinary tract issues. You know, they have infections or stones or their bladder hurts or they're, you know, they're, they're have inflammation or something and they just want to point it out to the attention, to your, you know, to say, you know, something's up. Um, or vomiting, you know, cats, animals and dogs and cats vomit for many different reasons. Um, it's, a, it's a symptom. It's a symptom like anything else of something wrong. It's the body's message that tells you something that's wrong. And that's some way that they have learned to communicate with us, you know, and we just have to um, interpret it, like you said, in a, in a different way by asking what is going on. Like for instance, because of all of the confinement that people are having and they're staying home a lot, the animals are becoming uh, overwhelmed, emotionally overwhelmed. And I'm experiencing uh, what I call a lot of emotional purging mm -hmm. in these animals. There's a lot of um, gastrointestinal situations that are coming into the ER now. Um, a lot of vomiting, a lot of diarrhea, a lot of um, urinary obstructions in cats, you know, from stress. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of seizures I'm seeing, a lot of heart um, arrhythmias and heart failure. You know, things that are associated with the energetics of, you know, us being in a little bit of a higher level of anxiety. Mm -hmm. yeah, I had, a, I had a, an owner uh, whose cat came in for a urinary obstruction, and he said, you know, I understand that this could be um, related to stress in my cat. What do you suggest I do? Is there something I can give him? And I said, well, <laughs> you know, I, I would suggest you know trying to be um you know mindful of the situation that the cat is in you know because in our house we had a we had a day that everybody was vomiting what it was like two days the cats the dog everybody was just vomiting mm -hmm. and we had to take a step back and okay look, we need to tone it down in this in our environment because there's just too much energy and it could be it doesn't have to be nervous energy or, or ang anxious energy it's just it could be you know, just too much. Yeah, and uh, people often don't realize how much processing they're doing in their minds. You know, mm -hmm. even if everything just seems all good, where nobody's fighting, nobody's angry, nobody's upset, humans still process a lot. And like you said, animals absolutely absorb disharmonious energy. They will absorb excess energy. And yeah. it, you know, just like, Imagine if you're in a, a room and somebody's playing two different radios with two different heavy metal music, you know, going. Nobody, it's all good. It's, you may not like it. It's just music. It's just playing. But it's going to have an effect on the way your body feels, right. you know, because our bodies are mostly water. Water responds to energetic vibration. And when it's just blasting, then it, you can feel the change. Animals feel that not only from sound and light, but from emotions and thought patterns as well. And so it, it's um, encouragement and um, empowerment, you know, for people to not get down on yourself for being human, but set yourself up to be a little bit more aware of what you're actually feeling right. so that you can make a change if you've find excess in yourself, you know, yeah. and yeah. this is, the animals will communicate that when you see them barfing or excess scratching or, or whatever it is, it's like, they're saying, here's how it feels. Mm -hmm. You're right. Because you know? they, need to get, they need to do something with that energy that they're, that they're feeling. And, you know, a lot of people, I think a lot of people understand the concept that when I'm stressed out, my dog can be stressed out or yeah. because they feel it. But what's the mechanism around that is that we have an electromagnetic field that is produced 
from our hearts um, very, very strongly. It's the largest electromagnetic um, field of, of, from our body. And um, studies have shown that this field goes out uh, at least nine feet, maybe probably even more. We just don't have the technology yet to measure it out there, but it goes really far. And what we put into that electromagnetic field, the, the way it, um, the way that it resonates and the frequency that it's at, whether it's smooth and coherent or jagged, like that kind of heavy metal mishmash, really depends on how, what emotional landscape we're, we're coming from. Mm -hmm. You know, so if we come from a place of, of calm, appreciation, care, and love, and gratitude, that's a really nice, smooth signal. And the animals love that. And people love that. They can sense that. Mm -hmm. And if it comes from this anxiety or frustration, um, anger, judgment, whatever that is, that is in a discord, that frequency is also very jagged. Mm -hmm. And that gets picked up as well. Mm -hmm. And um, so if you have, a, I feel sometimes if you have a visual of what that would look like, like if you could see your emotions, coming out of your body mm. I think people might say whoa that's weird I don't like that and I'm gonna I want <laughs> nice and like the rolling waves you know and and to make a conscious effort to change that yeah it is a conscious effort too I mean like people will say oh that that sounds like work do I have to really work at it the answer is yes yeah. you know it, it just is it, it but it, it asks people to be aware like what is your priority it's not about good human, bad human, you know, unless you really want to live in that, that world of punishments, you know, it re and the animals are not about good human, bad human, right? right. They're just simply right. going, here's how it feels. Like, yeah. hey guys, pay attention. Here's how it feels, you know? And so like, if, if we're not going to say good human, bad human, because we're human, we have this opportunity to shift perspective a little bit and just go, okay, what's my real priority here? You know, if I'm in a in an emergency room and I have to put put this critter's body back together, what's my priority? What's really truly valuable here? And um, you know, if maybe you have more to say about this, but what I know from my own experience. <clears throat> you know, I've worked a lot with horses, right? And horses that nobody else wanted to touch. And, you know, here goes me, I got this one, you know? And um, it was all 100% because my awareness was first with my heart. Yes. It was first with my body. It was first with generating that, that smooth wave in such a way that the animal can feel me. I can let them see me that this is who I am, buddy. And then that becomes our place of connection mm -hmm. because that's, that's what they're looking for to have the experience that humans call safety. Yeah. Um, when animals feel somebody with them of whatever species doesn't really matter, but when they feel that harmonious movement they feel not alone. Right. And when animals feel not alone, that is the ripe ground for safety, right? Mm -hmm. And so horses, you know, there's a story I love to tell all the time about the little horse that I bought for $50 at an auction because he had been profoundly abused. Like, I'll just spare you the details, you know. It, I, I was told it took six cowboys to put this small horse in a trailer. Like they had, to, they beat him into it or something. And they were telling me he was going to kill me. And I just said, okay, thank you. You know, and they, they're like, okay, we'll rope him for you. You let us know when you're ready. Cause you're not going to be able to touch that horse. I'm like, okay, thank you. And um, I just walked in the paddock and stood maybe 15 feet from him and did exactly this. I just brought my awareness to my heart, to my body. And I said, here's who I am. You judge for yourself if you can trust me, because I'm not going to force you to trust me. That's yeah. impossible, right? And the way that, you know, it took a few minutes listening to each other, and then we had to go pull the trailer up, and, um, you know, there's cowboys with ropes 
standing by. And um, I, I ended up just taking the halter in and I showed it to him. I said, I really need to ask you to wear this because we really need to get you out of here. And from my heart, feeling my heart, I was using my other skills to communicate with pictures and senses, you know, of where I wanted him to come with me and giving yeah. him the chance. What's that? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. And giving him the chance to trust me or not, right? But I knew I was telling the truth because I could feel that in my heart. And um, I just basically let him know, it's time. I need to ask you to wear this. And he just flipped his ear. He gave me his ear and said, okay. And mm -hmm. I literally just walked over to him, put the halter on, and he stood stock still. I didn't even put pressure on him. And he just followed me right out all the way up to the trailer. And we walked in side by side. He just stepped in right next to me into the trailer, closed the door, and, and off we went. Um, there's m several situations like that in my world where um, it was 100% about self-awareness, 100% about me being willing to communicate safety from my own body rather than waiting for the animal to appear to be safe for me. Right. Right. So right. That, that's got to translate into the ER. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's it. You know, I, you never told me that story and I love that. That's, oh. such, that's such a great story. Yeah. When I draw, yeah. when I draw it out, it's like an 18 minute story. So I just, I just squished it a little right. bit here, but yeah. Yeah. You know, a couple of things came up for me as you were saying that one of the things is, um, and I'll get back to the original question Yeah, was that, I find that um, people in general are afraid of going into that heart space and, and just going in and putting out that love. There's an S there's, there's a lot of, they, there's self judgment around that. And there's, there's ego and fear saying, okay, well, you know, what if this doesn't work or what if I'm too vulnerable or what if I fail? you know, all this kind of communication sets up and, and we need to let that go, right? It, it, we just need to let that go. <laughs> and like you did was just to connect with yourself and love and wait and be patient, right? And allow it to go and allow it to go. And what, what I've noticed in, in these ER patients is the, when the ER is a very um, busy, loud place. So when the animals come in, <laughs> Hey, buddy. <laughs> when the animals come in, they're um, uh, they come into the back and they are bombarded, you know, with all these sensory inputs. And I'm gonna. <laughs> you can't see. I love it. We just get the little butt and the tail in the in the view. <laughs> there he is. Monster. That's my cat, monster. Um, so I've, I've noticed, uh, animals, dogs coming in that are nervous and they're just standing there waiting and they're looking around, looking around. If I come by and I just, you know, I, I always, I'm always mindful having that vibration in the ER to come from a place of, okay, here we, here I am, you know, we're, I'm open and I'm sending out love and, and calm. And I've had dogs double take me, which is, really, yeah. you know, I'll, come, I'll come by and they will, um, they'll look at me and they'll look and then they'll, they'll look. Yes. Like, what, are they, what are they look? What are they seeing that they haven't seen? I uh, love it. And they, then they lock on to me and they just, they're just waiting for me to do something. <laughs> I love it. I'm, it's, I had an experience like that um, just at a gas station, like where I'm sitting in the passenger seat and across the way was this truck and there was a yellow lab in the back of the truck. And I looked at him and I just sent him a hello, not vocally. And he, I think he had never seen that before. Because he just started, <laughs> rah, 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 rah. <laughs> yeah, he started like barking at me like, wow, wait, what are you doing? Wait, what was that? You know, 
And I, so I just disconnected and I said, no worries, no worries. <laughs> but what was amazing is a couple minutes later, that truck was pulling out or something and, um, and it drove by the front of our car. And as it did, the, the dog was like looking at me and like beaming to get my attention. And he's like, okay, bye. You know, <laughs> and just the connection is, yeah. and I think, I think it's really cool that that came up because um, I think a lot of people assume that animals are all more enlightened than humans, that animals all already know this. But the, the, the truth is, is there are plenty of animals who haven't ever had that experience of a human embodied emanating that purity of heart, that open heartedness. And, yeah. um, and they are surprised sometimes. It's yeah, that's a good way of putting it, that surprise factor, because it seems like that is a surprise. You yeah. know, I've had, you know, um, a while ago when when I, st I started um, just really embracing, you know, the heart coherence and, and being able to radiate that out, uh, I did notice that animals just look, looked at me differently. They just did. And and I'd be like, what is he looking at? Like, it, I, I feel like they see something that I can't see that is there, but they're seeing it. Yep. And and you could see them scanning and looking and, yeah. you know, it's, it's so interesting. And they're, and, you know, whether or not, we have a conversation is, you know, sometimes yes, sometimes no, it's not important. You know, sometimes right. it's just a, yeah. Yeah. That's how, when I was like an early teenager, that was how I was paying attention is when they looked at me in that way, that was like my, my foundation to know who I am as well. And to know when I, I, I didn't have the language back then to say I was in my heart or I wasn't or whatever. I just knew what it felt like. And I, yeah. and when, when I felt like this, the animals respond this way. And I knew I could, and I played with it to be able to have command to generate that space, to generate that, that feeling in me when I wanted to connect with an animal. I mean, another example, um, I think I was 19 and we went to the California State Fair or something. And they had camels and, and giraffes there on this day. And I love, love, love giraffes. So I walked over and I'm standing by the giraffe's enclosure. Oh, now my internet's unstable, but that's right. It'll come back. Um, I, I was standing, standing by the giraffe's enclosure, just beaming love. Like I didn't need anything from them. I didn't want anything. I was just so, so in love with these amazing creatures who were standing over at the other end of the paddock. And one of them picked up his head and he turned and he looked straight at me because he could feel me. And he walked, he walked over and just reached out over the fence all the way and he, he picked up my jacket in his mouth and he was just mouthing on my jacket and I'm rubbing his face and it, it was a moment, right? Cause here's this 19 year old surrounded by little kids and, and I'm just sitting there loving on him. And, but it's a hundred percent that, that purity of here's my heart. This right. is the truth of my heart. And animals will always show up for that. Just like, you know, your kitty, he comes in when, and I was paying attention to this too. It comes in when the energy shifts. Cats love energy. Cats love that openness. Like yeah. they are a testament to when you're in your heart and when you're emanating that the beauty and the truth of your being, they will be right there, you know, and energy healers will tell you too, like cats, cats will come and lay on top of you when you're doing energy work because they uh -huh. just dig it, you know? Yeah. I feel, I feel like for them, it almost feels like home. Yes. You know? That's how it <laughs> feels know? to me too. <laughs> that, they, that they, that they, you know, they definitely gravitate to that all the time. I mean, I have a little energy mat that um, is filled with uh, tourmaline and um, black tourmaline and amethyst crystals. And whenever I have it open, it, the, anim the cats are always on it. Yes. You know, I can't get, I can't use it. I mean, I, I will kick them off, but <laughs> <laughs> always want to be on it. 
you know, we have we have crystals, um, especially that gray cat. He loves to sit on top of the big amethyst rocks that we have. Yeah. 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 It's, this is it's, the crystals. They're such a they're they're just exactly what they are, right? Crystals are not. They don't have a mind and an ego that are going to, you know, sort of go wonky in the vibration, right? Crystals vibrate what they are. They are yeah. a specific structure, and it, there's a purity to it. There's an uninterrupted coherence, re really, of another kind. You know, crystals are profoundly coherent with themselves. And cats love that. And um, it's just, it really is no different. I mean, it's different in the details, but a human being having a priority of being aligned with their heart, you become the crystal that just emanates a pure frequency. And yeah. animals will always show up and say, there you are. Yeah, it, yeah. They are remarkable. And and that's like, that's also healing for them. Look, there he is. Can you <laughs> start that? <laughs> that's funny. Start that sentence over. It's also healing for them. Can you hear me? Is it good? No? Yeah. Now you're back. Yeah. Can you just start that sentence over if you can? Like, it's also healing for them. Yeah, um, it is the, the energies that we put out for them can be, um, they can work both ways. They can um, be healing frequencies and they can be destructive frequencies where they can actually create some sort of disease pattern in them from the frequencies that we're constantly emitting and because uh, these animals are invested in us, they love us so much, and they're in our vicinity all the time, they not only do they sense our energies, but they will start to incorporate those energies as transfers into their own bodies, where it starts to change their physiological makeup. Um, and then it'll start creating certain disease processes inside of them because of the things that we're putting out. And that's not to, you know, say bad human, you know, you're, you're hurting your animals, right? Because we don't want to get into that mindset. Yeah. But it is another reason to be mindful of what the energies we are putting out and how it's being received, you know, to our, to our animals, to our friends, to our families, to our neighbors, to the world, you know, to the people across the globe i mean they're feeling it we all we're all feeling each other's energy yes yeah yeah and i love that you said it's it's not a bad human thing you know so it, to me it's like a lot of people they will do they'll fly universes to take care of their animals they'll do whatever it takes they'll go you know so far out of their way to care for their animals and but a lot of them are doing that with this energy of worry right. right with this energy of have i done enough can i do more should i do more have i missed something mm -hmm. right and mm -hmm. what i love is especially and maybe for some people it seems counterintuitive or like you said earlier it's really hard to go to a to the heart space for humans but when your animal when you notice your animal is ha having a hard time one of the the best things you can do is take care of yourself first one of the best things you can do for your animal is bring yourself back to your own body and if you need tools there tools exist you know if you need support support exists if but whatever it takes empower yourself to recognize that you see an animal in distress diarrhea or barfing or scratching or whining or just something's not right one of the best things you can do to help them is use your tools to come back to your own heart and feel that heart space and then you can take action from a totally different place just like you do at work yeah yeah i feel like the opportunities that people use in their animals to do that more mindfully um, or when they are given a diagnosis of some terminal condition, mm -hmm. you know, such as cancer, say their dog has cancer. Um, a lot of them 
you know, it's, it's, it's sad. It's worrisome. It's, um, this, you know, stressful for them. And I, and they go through that whole process that you mentioned of self-judgment. Like, what did I do wrong? Did I miss something? Could I have done something earlier? Could I, could I, could I have prevented it? What, you know, it's all, it becomes all about them. Mm-hmm. And really what they need to do is um, to open your heart and be in your heart and to project um, a mind, um, uh, a mindful intention of wellness. Um, but to, instead of focusing on the disease state, to really picture the animal being in its pure magnificence, in its beautiful wellness state, and emanate that love and that light to them. And a lot of times you'll see a shift. You'll notice a shift. They're going to start to feel better because now we're focusing our mind in a different direction of health instead of disease. Yes. Right. And it makes us feel better. Yes. And, it, and we don't feel as stressed and the animals are feeling, you know, better. And, and it's not easy for people to do that, you know, but it, it does work. You know, it works to focus on the things you want to see. Ding, 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 <laughs> ding, ding. <laughs> and this, because it's hard for people, like there's so much conditioning in humanity that, you know, to prepare for the worst, this is never going to work. Um, well, I'll just disappoint myself so nobody else can disappoint me or, you know, whatever, whatever it is, that's not natural human nature. That's eons of conditioning to not be brilliant. But in the animal kingdom, the animal kingdom doesn't have that same consciousness to go against ourselves that way. So they do respond when we shift into picturing and feeling and projecting wellness love what we do want what it's going to look like after this because they're they're not evaluating good human bad human right and what i love about um the existence of heart math is for the people who feel safer having science back this stuff up it exists it through heart math through the Institute of Noetic Sciences, Bruce Lipton, Greg Braden, Joe Dispenza, they all have teams of people um, providing reliable data. So if people do want the data, if they can't bring themselves to say, okay, I'm gonna trust that it works and I'm gonna try it, or even, even people who feel like they have tried it and it hasn't worked, you know, they just, I would say it, they haven't been effective, right? If somebody hasn't been effective, it doesn't mean that your innate intuitive energetic system isn't working. It means right. that it's not tuned quite right, you know? And right, right. just please give yourself the gift of um, more education, of mm-hmm. guidance, of assistance, you know? And because it does exist more, more so than ever. And then as we do gift ourselves the education and the experience, yeah. then we can create the whole world very, very differently. And, you know, you and I can tell stories all day long, and I would love to, but it really comes down to people, um, having the the courage and the willingness to give themselves the experience so they can prove to themselves what it actually feels like to have an animal look at them differently and say, there you are. And boom, that connection, you can't unhave that connection, you know? Right. And like you said, to allow themselves to go there and to, it's a choice, it's a choice. And there's a, a choice point involved because we're we're always conditioned to think about when you think of the word what if it always people naturally go to a negative um situation you know what if it doesn't work what if it breaks what if it doesn't start what if it fails right instead of what if it's magnificent what if it's healed what if it's amazing right (laughs) because that's equally 
<laughs> I know. That's like equally possible, right? Right. I had a friend of mine who she was, um, she has horses and she was afraid to, to um, get on her horse and ride in like over these last week because she's like, well, what if I fall off and the hospitals are filled with people with have, with have COVID-19 and I'm going to be exposed to all these people and I have to go to the hospital and there's not going to be enough medications or staff or whatever. So she doesn't want to go riding. And I'm like, well, I mean, this is a, this is a futuristic situation that's hypothetical. Right. And you're creating, creating a scenario of this, you falling off this horse. Right. I was like, so what if you get on the horse and you ride it? It can and, relax, yes. <laughs> and you're not falling off and you're having an amazing time and you're, you're running and you're playing and you're stretching and you're, you're doing your thing and you feel great and you get a bunch of exercise and you go home and you, you know, have dinner and go to bed. Right. And you go home full of love and you've been breathing horse all day and which is magical for the people who don't know that, but yes. Right. So we have this, we have this choice in our minds to create a scenario in the future. So why not create the better one? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And I think, you know, it goes back to what you were saying before that humans tend to be afraid to go to their heart. And it's a, a fear, a, a couple things. I think it's a fear of something uncommon. You know, they're, they're afraid of being hurt. I think that feeling their heart um, has, it, there is a sensation to it. And it's not always comfortable. And it's not always familiar. And so that, that can be misinterpreted as something bad or wrong or something to in, avoid. But right. having these little, even tiny little experiences of um, everything is, what is great. I'm going to come to my heart and say hi to my dog in a different way and then feel what that feels like. You get a little more experience being in your heart when there's no threat, right? Like humans, you don't have to go full bore kamikaze saying, I'm going to have an open heart and I'm going to love now, right? You don't have to scare yourself into love. You can welcome smaller experiences and the animal kingdom, the animal, that's why they're here. Ultimately, lots of other stuff happens too. But when you show up as a human willing to be, con willing to connect, willing to let an animal connect with you and have your uh, just in, just play with enough awareness to feel your body when you're there breathe through your heart or or just don't even work that hard just be aware of what it feels like you've just totally opened the door to living that way more and more and more and it it changes the world it changes your world and then yeah. your electromagnetic field changes the world of others all around. Right. That's how the system is designed, really. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. one of the things to touch upon, too, when, when um, people, when it comes to their animals, the time where they are eminently in their heart without even thinking about it is in those times of crisis. They come into the ER, and because they are so focused on the possibilities of losing that animal, which is essentially a part of themselves, mm. that becomes very, very threatening and very scary. Mm -hmm. And they don't know how to navigate through that place because it's this unfamiliar place that they're now sucked into their heart space and they don't know what to do. And so it gets very muddled and there's, that's where the fear, the anxiety, the, the anger, the frustration, the irritability, all of those heightened, hyperreactive emotions come into play. And if I feel that if there was just practice, you know, when you're not in crisis, exactly. to, to be in that heart and to emanate that love and to get familiar, like you said, with what's happening to your body in that, in that space, then in those moments of crisis, you're going to be more grounded 
and heartfelt and more centered in your mind and you're gonna have more discernment, more clarity, more focus, you know, more ability to help, you know, yes. yourself and your animal. Yes. You know, and the people that are trying to help your animal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh, it's so beautiful. And I, thank you for all of that. That to me is um, a huge part of creating a new earth side by side with the animals is people being willing to, um, to find and receive the tools and the guidance to be able to navigate all that turmoil. It does exist. That's the work that I do is guide people like, here's what you're feeling and here's how you navigate it. And here's how you expand beyond it and there are so many different different techniques but um it it can be profoundly simple when the priority is coming to your heart and um that ultimately in all the the studying and looking and seeing that i've done every single modality will eventually lead you to the simplicity of the heart so i figure why not start there and then the animal kingdom is the most amazing partner to say there you are yes this is what it feels like yes and even if they have an injury even if they are if their body is really um sick and they're on their way you know to the end of their life they still emanate love and mm -hmm. we can be available for that and the more available we are the more loved they feel because we're yeah. receiving their love too. Love is not a one-way street. It's if I'm willing to receive it, I'm feeling it. And if they're offering it and I'm receiving it, they're feeling it. Right. Yeah. And so it's uh, not a job to do. It's really, it's, it's a, a, an honor. It's, it's a way of being that nourishes everybody. So um, we're pretty much out of time here. Is there anything else you'd like to say or ask before we wrap up for today? Um, you know, I guess one thing is uh, people like to know, you know, there's a lot of, it's, it's nice to talk about all of it, you know, and, and, but people want to know how, you know, mm -hmm. how am I supposed to do this? How am I supposed to get into my heart and feel the way, you know, not feel that, that anxiety like how do I do that mm -hmm. and you know I do um you know teach, uh, I will be doing some workshops and classes on that however there's a lot of really good YouTube videos um heartmath.org has a ton of information and um to just and books to read about it I really one thing I do love about their technique is that they're very they're short they're simple, they're quick, and they're, they're effective. And when you said, you know, it's, it's just not working, I've done it, but it's not working, then there's something, some part of that technique where you're, you're still in that little disconnect, yeah. you know, and mm -hmm. you're not quite getting into that space or allowing that to happen. And um, I find that the, the resistance sometimes around the shift is uh, not being able to recall a regenerative loving feeling in the throes of chaos because yeah. that's when you want to do it yeah. <laughs> is when you're angry or frustrated or in the battle is where you want to acknowledge that you're okay i'm angry and i'm yelling and take a moment breathe you know, from that space, you know, focus your attention into your heart space and just breathe in and out of your heart. Like your heart has these two little nostrils in there and you're just breathing in and out from that. And remember a, a feeling, a remember a time in your life where you felt love or joy or care. And just think about that. Relive that moment. Let and it then it'll take you out of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it'll take it out, take you off of that, whatever it is that's making you angry, because now you're remembering a time when you were in, I don't know, the Bahamas and you were swimming with dolphins or something, <laughs> you know, or on a roller coaster ride and you were like, yay, <laughs> whatever it is, pick, you know, write them down, like pre write them down, you know, take a moment and, and write down, uh, you know, two or three 
moments in your life that you thought were incredibly awesome that gave you great feelings. And then just revisit those in those moments. Mm -hmm. And you'll see the more you do it, the more you do it, the easier it will become and you will start to notice the shift. Yes. So. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Beautiful. So heartmath.org. Um, we'll put somehow for people to reach you if they want to reach you. And then there's yeah, well, tools and stuff on my website too. Yeah. And I have my website is drberrysands.com. And so they can reach me there. It's not, it's all, it's getting the kinks worked out of it. And so it'll be up and running pretty soon, but perfect perfect we'll put all the links up and it will make it easy for people no worry barry thank you so much what a beauty i love every time that we talk it just goes so many rich places so thank you so much and um i'll see you soon yeah thank you carrie thank you so much it's good to see you thank you